Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look how we could alter our Poisson regression to deal with rates. What we're going to call Poisson rate regression. So you might say, well, why would you need that? Imagine I was looking at, say, the number of accidents <coughs> on a road. Well, the longer the road, the more likely they are to be accidents. I need to somehow take into account the fact that you know, if I look over a longer amount of time or I look over a longer or different lengths of road, I need to take into account the length of the road. So here we've got sort of, we're saying, if we've got the log of some rate, which is the number of events divided by, in this case, we've got time, but it could be divided by distance. And I want to adjust for that. If I rearrange this, I can then get that the log of the number of events equals the log of either time or distance, depending on what I'm looking at, plus my normal stuff. So basically, I'm going to add into my model an extra term here, which is dependent on the TI. It's got the log. But the whole idea is going to be that, notice there's a coefficient in front of this, but the coefficient is 1. So we, talk, we call this type of term an offset. And what we're saying is, we know that we need to take into account the fact that we're not comparing like with like. If I'm going to compare, you know, rates of accidents and I've got a road that's a thousand kilometers long and a road that's only one kilometer long, I need to adjust for that. And we adjust for it in press on regression by converting it to press on rate regression and putting an offset term in there. And what the offset does is it basically puts that term in as a predictor, but it forces the coefficient to be one. OK, so here's an example. We're we'll looking at the insurance company and we want to look at the number of claims that they've had. And we've got the district, the city they're in, the type of engine, the age of the driver. But of course, what we need to take into account as well when we look at our data is we also have the number of policies in that strata. So you can see they're not consistent. So in this one, district one, less than one litre, 35 plus, there's 1,680 policies. Of course, if you're gonna get claims increased, it might be just because there's more policies. And we sort of want to go, can I work out if the rate of claims is just due to the fact that there's more policies or is it due to the fact of engine age and district? So how do you do that? Well, it looks almost the same as before. We've got claims on district, engine and age. We've got family equals press on, but I've got an offset, but this extra thing called offset, in our case, log policies, data is insurance. It doesn't appear here anyway. It doesn't need to. They're going to force the coefficient to be one. Here's all the coefficients associated with district, engine, and age. How do I even know it's there? You've got to look carefully up here and see that the offset's in there. It's automatically taking into account that log policy. So you need to be very careful. If I give you output in quizzes and tests, etc., you need to go and look and see if there's an offset term. Because if there's an offset term, you need to incorporate it in any prediction. Okay? So. We will look at this in more study in the case studies. So there we have it. We have this idea that you can basically model the number of events. We can have various predictors, but sometimes we will want to put into the fact that there will be in our particular scenario, we're not comparing like with like. It might be that we're looking over different lengths of time or different distances. They're the two classic examples. In that case, we will put an offset term in as well. Both of these cases, I've only shown you the theory. We're going to sit down and actually look at them in practice in the case studies. We'll have a standard press on regression and a press on rate regression in the case studies. So see you in them.